Hey, what is the first thing that comes to your mind when you see this figure? If you're watching this from the English speaking world, the first thing that comes to your mind might be how racist is this? Perhaps you've already heard somewhere that the name of this figure is Black Pete and that it is part of a Dutch tradition which is dedicated towards children. Perhaps you already heard in the media somewhere about the racist Dutch tradition. A very common opinion that many people in the English speaking world have about the Dutch tradition of Black Pete is something along the lines of whoa i thought the dutch were a very non-racist people how can they have this tradition well if you're indeed one of these people who are asking themselves this question you basically already answered your own question the dutch are a very non-racist people we are among the least racist countries on the entire planet and whenever some nutcase hooligan yells racist comments at a black soccer player the entire country strongly rejects the behavior of the man in question. In this video I'll explain to you why the tradition of Black Pete is absolutely not racist and that the tradition is also much much more interesting than that. Now I can already hear the raising heartbeat of many people who clicked on this video. So yes, let me immediately say the following. Black lives do matter. And the black community in North America is indeed in quite a bad situation and this situation needs to be fixed. However, this tradition has nothing to do with all of that and is celebrated by people of all skin colors. I will step by step explain to you the true origin of the tradition as well as the true meaning of blacking up within the context of this tradition. I will do this by answering the following questions. Where does the tradition originate from? Why is the face made black? Why does he have a stick? Why does he look like a moor? Why does he have a bag in which he kidnaps children back to Spain? And what type of clothing is he wearing? Let's start. Question 1. Where does the tradition originate from? This tradition originates from multiple European pagan elements which go back thousands of years and which can still be seen all across Europe today involving the mythological concept of the wild hunt which is a supernatural group of demons which according to the tradition occasionally rise the sky and which was believed to bring the typical things that people used to worry about throughout most of human history. Things like famine, disease, child mortality, crop failure, war, etc. The wild hunt was typically led by the Germanic god Wodan or further to the north by the Nordic god Odin. This ancient mythology can be seen all across the continent in festivals and traditions in which people dress themselves up like these wild hunt demons and then do certain things such as scaring little children, running around while making a lot of noise or playfully beating up their neighbors with a stick. And later when Europe became Christian the tradition got gradually Christianized. The wild Wild hunt figures gradually transformed into devils and the god Wodan or Odin got transformed into a Christian saint, usually Saint Nicholas. In the Netherlands and Belgium this figure is called Sinterklaas and the North Americans copied the tradition, slightly mispronounced it and turned it into Santa Claus. And the wild hunt slash devil figure is also brought to life in the American movie Krampus, the Christmas devil. Question 2. Why is the face made black? The answer depends on where where you are within Europe. Depending on the location the black face was believed to increase fertility and or bring good luck. The black faced figure would either scare little children making their faces black as well which was believed to turn them into very courageous adults as a result of confronting their fears at a very young age. So if a young child is touched by the devil slash wild hunt he or she will become very courageous so it was believed because he already got confronted with things like the death so he becomes very badass. In some parts of Europe the blacked up individuals chase after the girls that are single in order to black up their faces as well and this was believed to increase fertility, bring them good luck too and so on. So in short the blacking up is done for different reasons and these reasons are slightly different based on the specific location but what they all have in common is that they all refer back to the typical things that people living thousands of years ago used to worry about. Things such as life life, death, fertility, luck, child mortality, etc. Question 3. Why does he have a stick? Because of the connection that is often made between the devil slash wild hunt tradition and little children, the stick is there to punish the children that misbehaved. So the children that behaved well get presents from the saint, while the children that didn't behave well get punished by the devil slash wild hunt figure. And as already shown in certain parts of Europe, the stick is used by the black face figures to have a lot of fun beating up 
of the people from their own village. Question 4. Why does he look like a Moor? I fully understand that looking at this figure with the eyes of today, a lot of people might think that the figure is somehow dressed up like a colonized African, but this really isn't the case. Because the concept of the Moor, which can also be seen very clearly in parts of Europe that never had any colonies, is very strongly linked to the historical reality of Europe being relatively isolated and being the target of attacks which were conducted from North Africa. The Moor was not some weak colonized individual, but instead was very fearsome and powerful. The Moors used to raid the coasts of Europe and kidnap young women and children in order to sell them into slavery. And many books have been written about this specific time period. The Moors even succeeded in conquering the Iberian Peninsula, Spain and Portugal, which was then called Al-Andalus. And exactly there lies a very interesting connection between the Netherlands and Spain, which is embedded within the tradition of Black peat which we'll get to in a minute so in europe the concept of the moor gradually became something that brought bad luck took away children etc just like the wild hunt because the wild hunt was also already associated with the idea of having children taken away being associated with the disease and a high level of child mortality and the concept of the moor was also something that was associated with children being taken away not as a result of disease but as a result of kidnapping so therefore for the concept of the Moor got mixed within the mythology and the tradition, so in some parts of Europe the black faced figure occasionally look like Moors. Now on a little side note, most of my viewers are guys below the age of 35. A very well known video game that you might be familiar with is actually called The Wild Hunt. And also in this story The Wild Hunt kidnaps children. Beyond our world, the Wild Hunt rides the sky with every full moon. The Dark Raiders abduct our children into lands unknown. And the goal of the main character in this video game is to prevent the Wild Hunt from kidnapping his own daughter. So the Polish development team who created this game very successfully and accurately brought to life this European pagan mythology. Question 5. Why does he have a bag in which he kidnaps children to Spain? And this is where it gets really interesting and more specific for the Dutch version of this tradition. Because the Dutch version of this tradition doesn't just kidnap children, no, it kidnaps children to Spain. And this is an incredible reference to Al-Andalus being a place where kidnapped children and young women were taken to by the Moors. And in addition there is another connection between the Netherlands and Spain. Because of course the Netherlands used to be a part of the Spanish Empire. And the Dutch actually became an independent nation when the seven provinces rebelled against the Spanish Empire. So the connection between the Dutch Black Pete and Spain is twofold. First because the Moors kidnapped children back to Al-Andalus or Spain. And Second, because the Dutch fought against Spain in order to get their independence. And this brings us to the next question, which is very important, especially for the people who think that this is a depiction of a slave. What type of clothes is he wearing? Is he perhaps wearing clothes that was worn by slaves, as is often claimed by certain people? Well, no. These are Spanish nobleman clothing. These are the type of clothes that was worn by the Spaniards during the 16th century, the time of the Spanish Empire. This is not slave clothing, these are very expensive and high status clothing worn by Spanish imperialists. So again, you can see the connection between Black Pete and Spain. So having answered these six questions, let's go back to the original question that many people across the English speaking world have asked themselves. How can the Dutch have a racist tradition? The answer to that question is no, the Dutch do not have a racist tradition. Then how can the tradition be under attack? Well, because a certain certain lady from the United Nations, whom I do not respect, claimed that this tradition is a reference to colonialism and the transatlantic slave trade. The lady in question, Vereen Shepard, didn't do her research properly and her claim is wrong. The tradition is not a reference to colonialism and the only reference to slavery is the Moorish slave trade, of which the peoples of Europe were actually the target. So the reference
reference to slavery is literally the opposite of what Vereen Shepard claimed. Literally the opposite. The Moor is not a slave, but instead a slave trader. The slave is the little kid you can see in the back. He is the one getting enslaved and not the Black Pete. So it is completely the other way around than what Vereen Shepard claimed. Now another scandalous misrepresentation of the tradition of Black Pete was the documentary called Our Colonial Hangover, created by Sunny Bergman. This documentary also featuring Russell Brand, whom they according to the documentary maker accidentally ran into while filming, contained the most scandalous misrepresentation of the Dutch version of this tradition. For example, it showed pictures where these black peas indeed look a lot like some ridiculous slaves. But to anyone who grew up in the Netherlands or Belgium, these pictures are not familiar at all. And this is very annoying to be honest because this is not what the Dutch tradition looks like. It is very easy to see that this was done on purpose by the documentary maker in order to misrepresent the tradition for the purpose of creating an international scandal. And Sunny Bergman, who is Dutch herself, should be ashamed of herself. And on a little side note, yes, the Dutch tradition of Sinterklaas and Black Pete is also celebrated on the former Dutch colonies by actual black people. And there it also was never a problem before the United Nations started telling the people that there was something wrong with it. And yes, also there, the Black Pete figure is wearing Spanish nobleman clothing. And they come with a boat from Spain. So this is the tradition of Black Pete, its meaning and its origin. And yes, I fully understand that somebody who doesn't have this background information can easily be made to believe that this is indeed a racist tradition. However, from now on you are aware of the fact that it really isn't. So next time somebody claims that we, the Dutch, have a racist tradition, you will have all the information you need in order to explain to them the very interesting reality of this tradition, which actually is something that we in the West all have in common, irrespective of whether you're watching this from Canada, from Australia or from Germany. The folk mythology of monsters that appear during the night, vampires, wild hunt figures, Christmas devil and so on, all refer back to our shared European pagan roots that we all have in common, and which go back thousands of years. The Dutch are not a racist people, and actually by far most people in the Netherlands are getting pretty annoyed with these accusations. Especially Especially because the international media do not allow us to explain the tradition and its background and neither do the international media engage in an actual research and honest reporting about the true background of this tradition and the historical context that it should be put in because you cannot explain this by looking at this from a North American post-colonial transatlantic slave trade perspective. You have to look at this tradition from a European mainland pagan perspective and from the historical reality of Moors, Spain, the relationship between Spain and the Netherlands, etc. Then you can understand this tradition. And please also note that the Dutch version of this tradition is actually very distinct and special because it is the only one that refers specifically to Spain as a very special place within European history, from Al Andalus to the Spanish Empire, and actually comes from Spain with a boat. This tradition is a little gold nugget if it comes to European history and should be embraced, appreciated, and respected. And if you're interested to know more about this tradition, please check out the documentary Pagan Europe – My Encounters with the Devil, created by a man who has been investigating all of this material for more than 30 years. The documentary is very affordable, can be accessed through video on demand and has English subtitles. Thanks for watching this video and I wish you a nice day.